Thank you for joining us this evening for the Artists Exchange, a group created by and for artists to share new work, ideas, resources, and opportunities monthly over a glass of wine or tea if you prefer. So grab your beverage, I'm having water tonight, <laughs> and join us as we discover the work of metal sculptors Pamela Marori Durnham and Len Todaro. I'm Shelley Rugg, the Executive Director at Gallery Route 1, and for our presentation today, we ask that you please stay muted until we ask you to unmute. For best viewing, select Speaker View from the top right corner of your Zoom viewing screen. And we want you to know that we are recording today's presentation for future viewing on our website and YouTube channel. Now, please join me in welcoming our host, Pamela Blotner an artist, educator, and curator who lives and works in the Bay Area. She has worked as a sculptor illustrator for the Houston Zoo in Houston, Texas, and the Leatherback Trust Conservation Organization, and an artist designer for the Human Rights Watch, Physicians for Human Rights, and the UC Berkeley Human Rights Center. Blotner's sculpture and drawings have been exhibited in Europe, Asia, Africa, and the United States. She has taught at a number of universities throughout the U.S. and she is co-curator and founder with Meet Preckler of Artists Beyond Boundaries. Please welcome Pamela. Thank you, Shelley. That, that, that was lovely. It should be a little longer though, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, good evening. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've all looked forward to this program. We had a dry run yesterday, and it was so interesting that um, that I, I wish we could just repeat it. We probably will. Okay, so as Shelley just, just told you, um, or maybe she didn't, uh, tonight we have the great pleasure of hosting Lynn Todaro and Pamela Marori Durnham, artists I've known for quite a while, but have not known all about their work, which is the exciting part we get to see tonight. Uh, Pamela Durnham's sculptures are informed by her own life and the way she perceives the world around her. She uses steel wire, creating a kind of a linear 3D mass or a linear drawing. And she sometimes augments this with metal bands. Lynn Todaro uses metal in a completely different way, um, a more traditional way, in a way, telling stories with representational forms and symbolic gestures, many of which bear a feminist message. Both sculptures intertwine sensual and intellectual gestures playing with a narrative of suggestion versus intent. So please welcome our guests. And um, first, we're going to begin uh, with Pamela Durnham. And um, she has exhibited extensively in museums and galleries all throughout the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as Venice, Japan, and China. She's a prolific draw artist who continues to draw inspiration from the human figure. When she was in school, she had the formal classes, the figure drawing from life, but she now keeps working with the figure, abstracting it by stripping it down to a form that evokes the power of expression through gesture. One thing that we like to talk about on, on this program is all of the different elements in people's lives that inform the work they do now, particularly the unusual work that you may not know of. And I do want Pamela to talk about her sculpture, but we also discussed how her previous career in nursing has informed her sculpture in many ways. Pamela. Okay, um, hi everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's really great. And thank you, Pamela. I've really been looking forward to this and Shelley. Uh, and also Pamela, thank you for, for nudging me. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about this for a while. Um, as Pamela mentioned, I um, 
I was did nursing for my day job for a long time. Um, I have a BSN in nursing from UCLA, and I worked as an operating room nurse, and that informed my work in two ways. Well, kind of three ways. Both I in the operating room, I was working with the human body all day long, inside as well as out. Um, and I had a lot, there was also a lot of interpersonal react, interaction with my patients before surgery. And it's a very nervous time for people. So it was um, an important time to engage with them. And then the final thing is the operating room is where I learned to use power tools. Uh, DeWalt makes a line of surgical equipment. And so in orthopedics, I learned to use saws, drills, routers, um, and it turned out to be a really practical experience. Um, how about first slide, Pamela or Shelley? So my work is figurative. I've always worked with the figure. I started um, actually in ceramics. Um, I worked with one of our good friends, Andre Singer Thompson at Laney College, and um, I did ceramics there. I had done some broadcasting in Los Angeles I, um, the, what the, took me into wire was there was a real solidity to ceramic work and there's a very expressive fluid part of my nature that I wasn't really getting to in that work. Um, and through a long series of experimentations and experiences, I got to wire and it turned out to be um, a really perfect medium because I can express myself really gesturally and freely. I can do things with wire that I can't do with a pencil, that I can't do with a brush. So um, uh, I started actually working with hieroglyphs. Oh, wow, I can't see the time. I better keep track here. Um, so I started working um, to get as much three dimensionality from a two dimensional form. And then I kept working with the figure, drawing from Greek vases, drawing from temple sculpture, drawing from um, church sculpture on trips to Europe. And as you can see in this work, which is called Body Language, um, my work evolved to where I was really pulling and stretching and giving more dimensionality and um, movement. And um, it, it was always interesting to me how much I could work with the body and change forms and shapes and still have it read as a body and still have it read um, as, as something that's possible. So this was my, um, this is when I started, uh, this was in 2011. And this is work I did for quite a long time working with figures, um, figures like this. Next slide. Um, around 2015, I started changing the way I did figures. I started, this is when I really pulled back into making them really about gesture. Um, this piece is called um, Heart Attack. And it was um, based on, this is a, on your left, the left is a normal sinus rhythm EKG and the middle is a tachycardia and on the right is a really profound heart attack. It's a kind of a political question from how we were the before, the before times and then really the tachycardia for me started in the 90s when um, things started to fall apart between Democrats and Republicans. And then this heart attack for me was the election of Donald Trump when all chaos broke loose. Um, next, next, big, next slide. Uh, again, I continued with this. Um, this piece is called Battlefield. And um, so I've got the very um, gestural figures on the right. And then I also wanted to keep working with a rounder, more sensual form. So the figures on the left were just um, unspooling wire and um, just the forms just kind of came together in a very, very loose way. And for me, this piece, <clears throat> this, um, the um, the figures on the right can be an expression of the interior of what's going on in these figures on the left. Um, they could be the flotsam and jetsam of um, what's going on in the minds of the figure on the left. Um, 
again, I, as Pamela said, um, I suggest narratives and often people tell me what they, what they are. Next slide. Um, this now I'm also adding color. This piece is called Covalent Bonds Number One, and I'm also kind of loosening up. I'm really um, trying to um, mix up the different parts of my uh, repertoire of figures, um, and this is um, and so that's what I'm doing with these works. Next piece. This is covalent bonds number two. Now this piece, if you were to see it now, is completely different. I've added more figures and I'm just about to start spray painting it to give it a lot of color. But what I love in these pieces is the, um, is just uh, the freedom of the movement of the piece, the, the suggestions of storytelling, the interrelationship between the figures. Next slide. Um, this is a series I started um, on migration. And what's happened with this work is um, I've always worked in black steel wire um, with the notion, and for migration, this was some work I did at Vessel Gallery. Um, for me, migration is a human history thing from the very earliest times when people explored and moved out and look for new new places to inhabit. Um, I also um, come from, my family has migrated. My mother was a Holocaust survivor. She um, came here. Um, she came to look for a, a better place to live. Um, all My family are all fairly recent immigrants. But what happened with these works is um, with the black steel wire, I didn't want it to become associated with just um, with one group. I didn't want to appropriate another another race or another group. So these figures are now gold. And the next time you see them, they'll be gold and they'll have a different color background. Next slide. Um, with the with the notion that all of us are gold and all of us are um, looking for our place. And also all of us are in times where we have political upheaval, we have social upheaval, we have environmental upheaval. And I think we're only going to be moving more. Um, next piece, because my time is almost up, I think. I've also taken my work and used um, theater lighting gels, the uh, gels that are used to, to light um, shows. And um, in this way, I have in two dimensionally, I can have the effect of the overlapping of my wire sculpture. So as these different colors overlap and different colors are created, I'm suggesting another depth and level of interaction and meaning between the figures. Next. Um, so this was this was a really exciting way to do for me two dimensionally what I've done three dimensionally. Um, uh, so this is this has been another exciting way to work. And I think that's my time. Thank you, Pam. That was that was wonderful. Okay. All right, so um, so Lynn, you, you up? Are you ready for this? <laughs> okay, Lynn Todaro has making things in her bones, in her DNA. She's the daughter of a photographer and the granddaughter of a serious um, hobby painter. She began making her own art in 1980, I think in New York State, if I'm not mistaken, before moving to the Bay Area uh, to go to the Art Institute, where she got a master's degree in sculpture. While in school, she worked as an appliance repair technician, work that was an inspiration as well as a source of art materials, broken parts that she could take home to recycle into her artwork. Soon people saw, um, colleagues saw that she was doing this and began to 
give her bits and pieces of things. She continues to use found objects, often in combination with other materials and media. Before she retired, which I think was relatively recently, Lynn taught classes, including metal smithing, metal casting, furniture design, and sculpture at Mission College in Santa Clara. Welcome to you, Pam. Um, not Pam, Lynn. Hi. So I, I actually was not living in New York when I started um, making sculpture. I was in Texas. And I started as a graphic design major and I just, you know, started dragging things in from this vacant lot near my apartment and, and sawing them and putting them together. And uh, that sort of was the beginning there for, for, for sculptural things. I, I've used all kinds of materials in my work, but for this presentation, I've tried to focus on the metal working and the history of how that came about. So I have a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology and uh, from Southwest Missouri State. And during that time there, I learned welding and a little bit about casting and how to put things together, all kinds of uh, basic mechanical stuff, which proved to be very helpful uh, when I started making sculpture. So we can go on and start looking at the work now. So here's a picture of me from 1993, back before I had to wear glasses. <laughs> um, this sculpture is called Rocking Horse, and it's just made from um, an old motorcycle frame and a bunch of things that I was able to find in the street in San Francisco where I was living um, when I went to San Francisco Art Institute, where I got my MFA. And um, mostly car parts and things like that welded together. And the idea of this was it was kind of a day of the dead horse and uh, tried to make it accurate proportions to what a horse would be. Although many people seem to think it's a dinosaur because they're just not used to seeing a horse skeleton, I guess. But anyway, here we are at Falkirk Cultural Center where it was on extended loan for many years. Uh, next slide. So also while I was in grad school, I dragged car hoods out of the street and old ironing boards and things that I thought, I, I really liked the colors and the textures. And I would take a torch and cut them all into pieces like a giant collage and, and weld them back together. Um, the earlier versions of this, I would paint them, but these ones, um, the later ones, I just used the colors of things as I found them. So this is one that I reworked recently, but actually dates from the 90s originally. Next slide. This is continuing story of Eve, and it the shoes there, the feet and the shoes, they're actually made from a mold of my own feet. And the shoes have a um, very detailed snakeskin texture on them. And the apple, of course, the whole creation myth story is, is represented there with these headers and this bedstead. And a lot of what I like to do in my work is to use objects as symbols. So once I learned how to cast and weld, I could put those found objects together in a way that was more permanent and um, allowed me to manipulate them and, and do other things. So other, uh, other things to them. So let's see, next slide. This is Broiler Pan Venus. So I'd like to, you know, have a sense of humor in my work. I think a sense of humor is a very important survival tool for this life. And um, I've used this Botticelli Venus image in, in several different works. We'll see one in a little bit later. Um, I'd like to look toward art history and use those images that people are familiar with that familiar with in a different way. Um, next slide. This one is a letter U made out of old screws welded together. And um, the title is, Yes, I've Been a Bit Angry Lately. And 
this is another one where I've combined furniture parts with a uh, welded bound material. And it's kind of a tongue in cheek symbolic artwork that was kind of uh, came about after a breakup and my trying to express some frustration there. Next slide. This is Venus and it is made out of cookie tins and a bunch of other found metal, sheet metal things. It's hollow on the inside and it's actually my own proportions. So pretty much life size and uh, it's put together with pop rivets. So anybody who can drill a hole, you can put together things with pop rivets and it's so fun. They, it's a very permanent way of simply putting something together without messing up the paint. So when I welded those car hoods, the paint would get damaged, but this way I'll get to keep all the colors and patterns and everything like that. And the, um, the drapery around her waist is actually a dryer vent that got smashed up. And um, so that's Venus. Okay, next one. This is a diptych and it is Adam and Eve. So we're seeing Eve right now, of course. This was actually um, a mold that I made from my own hand. I, I started learning about how to cast um, live cast uh, body parts because for me the the human body and figure is not really about a person in particular they're just symbols so the hand is just an object and the body here is just an object that represents something and in this case it's about concealment and so we have the the bronze fig leaf and the bronze hand concealing a photograph and i, I also took the photographs for this um this piece next and then this is Adam. So for this, I didn't use my own hand. I uh, found a guy to model for me and, and cast, uh, made a mold of his hand and a big leaf. And then I had to find someone else to, to be Adam too. So, um, so I had to take that photo and that was kind of a, a fair, embarrassing but fun experience for both of us. Um, all right, next one. And here we have the Botticelli's Venus, but edited out to just these few little elements, the gestural hands and the hair. It was quite a technical, um, technical, frustrating experience trying to cast this hair. So I actually started with real hair and then I used synthetic hair. So this version, I uh, sculpted over wax to give it the shape. So I actually first pressed the hair into the wax and then we did a burnout. So lost wax, lost hair, and the hands were, were live cast and the photographs are photographs that I took myself. So I tried to place them exactly where they would be in the body and um, they're all mounted as, as a wall piece. And this is actually at gallery 125 right now in Santa Cruz, which is that co-op gallery that my wife and I run there. Um, next slide. This is Persephone. So again, I've got the um, just this very simple elements to try to tell the story about Persephone, who went down to the underworld and um, wasn't allowed to come back because she had eaten some pomegranate seeds. So here she is, kind of coming out of the earth as if she's rising up from the underworld, but she's got that pomegranate that's keeping her bound back there for several months of the year. And then her mother was basically the Greek mother of nature, um, got sad when she was back down there every year for a few months and created winter. So this is a bronze sculpture and uh, again, a live cast hand. And then I made a mold of a pomegranate and then sculpted this um, dirt for the earth. And it was a lot of fun working with the patinas and and trying to get that that red, that beautiful red that came out for the pomegranate. Next. This is um, called Tool Chest. So I did a lot of things that were visual puns. And Tool Chest is one that I made. Um, I first took a, an impression of a model's chest, made a wax version of that, 
cast it into sand mold and then pressed these tools into the sand mold and took them back out. So they're not actually part of the piece. They're just the, uh, the imprint of them that came out here. And I did this at the New Orleans Sculpture Lab, which sadly was destroyed in, in Hurricane Katrina as part of a US-UK residency, which I think is still going on, but they've moved it to another location now. So it was a good experience for me to learn about sand casting and also to work with a team of artists from different places. Next slide. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's a breakfast table. Again, kind of going with the puns. So the table is um, made out of acrylic. So I worked with another artist, Bill Dow, who did a lot of things with casting acrylic. And we embedded uh, breakfast cereal into the table, which was a really fun experience to do all that. And then the legs were made of cast uh, bagel, bagels and waffles and um, English muffins, biscuit. And then I thought it would be fun to set them on eggs so the, all the little feet are, are a bronze eggs. So that the whole base of it is bronze. And then the table is acrylic. Next. Live. And there's a close up of the cereal. So when I show this and their kids are coming around, they really like to look in there and find their favorite cereal floating around in the tabletop. So this is a totally functional piece, unlike the next one that we're going to look at. So next slide. This is uh, the bacon and egg seats. So these bacons, uh, bacon chairs are made out of bronze and they have a patina and dye on them to get the coloring. Um, and then the eggs themselves are vinyl. I thought it'd be really fun to think about, you know, sitting on fried eggs. And it's a piece that is also in gallery 125 and it gets a lot of attention when people come by and, and uh, a lot of laughs. I, I really appreciate when people like smile and you know, laugh a little bit, point to their friends and go, oh, look this. Um, <clears throat> you know, I kind of was influenced a lot by Donna and their sort of sense of humor. So these are not functional, although I made sure that if somebody sat on them, they wouldn't fall down. They have, they'll support some weight. Next slide. This is called Iron Hand Velvet Glove and actually was inspired by a, a horoscope that said it was going to be an iron hand velvet glove kind of day. And I try to picture what that could mean in terms of like the powerfulness of the iron hands and then the velvet glove, kind of this mossy green, earthy, natural sort of thing, balancing out this uh, hardness of the, the iron hands. Next slide. This is called Loaves and Fishes. And the tray in the middle I found, um, and it was already kind of rusty and old, and it the little fish shapes, I'm sure if you really hard, you can kind of find the fish shapes in there. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, but they kind of embodied the whole loaves and fishes story, even just by itself, that one tray, because it was the fish, and then you could have the loaves of little cornbreads or whatever. So I cast some, um, toast, which I'd already gotten a lot of experience with from the breakfast table. Mm -hmm. And um, then they have these little waves on the side and I, I made a fishing lure to go with it. And um, that is loaves and fishes. That's kind of a more recent one in the last few years. And then this is Banatiki. So I, I cast a lot of chromes and brushes and, and uh, things like that in this hair dryer. The hair dryer actually was what started this piece. I had this hair dryer that someone had thrown out and I made a mold of that and cast it in iron. So the hair, hair dryer is iron. Some of the pieces are bronze, some of them are iron and they're on top of a mold I made of my head. So like just the top of my head, I made a mold and cast that in iron. So it's like a heavy solid uh, mass that supports the weight of everything. And then it's this tiki torch. So. That's the Vanatiki part of it. And this was actually influenced by um, Nancy Graves, who's one of the people whose work I admired, the way that she um, welded together these cast pieces in this sort of lyrical um, arrangement 
Plata Lumen. This is a cast sterling silver piece. So I, I did teach metalsmithing and I ended up doing a lot of jewelry, sometimes as demonstrations. So this is called Tanks of the World and I actually copied I, tanks from different countries and tried to um, carve them in wax and, and uh, cast those lost wax in, in silver. So it's a little charming bracelet, not so charming. This is uh, Back to the Garden. It's named after a Joni Mitchell song, Woodstock, where she's talking about uh, going back to the garden. And um, it's Back to the Garden too. The first one is a, a little bit more solid piece and has an actual real gun in it. And you can see that on my website. Um, if you check that out, it's kind of precursor to this. So this one, I brought back the apple the apple um, from the Garden of Eden, of course. And that right now is at uh, Sierra Azul Sculpture Garden in Watsonville as part of the Sculpture Is exhibition there. All right, next one. And this is the last one. So this is Sierra Azul Sculpture Garden. If you get a chance to go there, it's a pretty awesome sculpture garden. And there's a, a plant nursery connected to it. And they bought this piece, so it's part of their permanent collection now. So that's a little bit more recent picture of how the sculpture has weathered and so have I. And that's the end. Thank you, Lynn. And for both of you, I learned more even today than I did yesterday. So I was written and thrilled. And um, I think I'd like to ask you, or would like to lead you into the same territory where we went last night, which is in terms of each other's work. I asked you to to be in a, to put yourself in a situation where you had to collaborate with each other. And I think I'll go back to that territory and ask you each, what aspect of the other artist's work would you work with and what would you do with it? So since you're all warmed up, Lynn, let's go. <laughs> well, I'll just say what I said yesterday was, was the first thing that came to mind was like a giant spider web and then you know, Pam would make the web and I would make a spider to put in there. Since I'm used to basically working in solid mass and, and Pam's working on these sort of linear airy things, but I'm not sure that's what I would actually want to do, but that's, but if we collaborated together because we have this, these contrasting ways of dealing with form, that that's kind of the, the way the forms would come together. I kind of like the idea that that, all the ideas that that suggests too. I don't want to enumerate them, but, but there, there, there are many. Okay. And Pam, what about you? Um, again, um, I would love to take the, um, the, the solidity and the um, 3D of lens and take mine out into the middle of the floor. And so I could see us, I mean, the spider web was interesting to me, but ways that we could um, even create an environment out in the middle of a room. And I really appreciate Lynn's humor. And I think we're both politically aware. And um, I think we both have a very feminist sensibility and that we could um, interact in a lot of interesting ways. We could be outside, we could be inside. Um, I could see my work, you know, moving inside and through and around Lynn's work. I mean, you could, there's, you know, a lot of possibilities for what we could do with each other. That sounds really fun. Yeah, I could see it as more of a 3D thing. So it would come off the wall then mm -hmm. give you yeah. an opportunity to kind of work in a, in a different format. Yeah. 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 No, it's um, there's there's there. You're right, Pamela. There's just so many things we could do that would um, play to each of our strengths. Uh, um, Shelley and I have talked about this almost like a fantasy. Wouldn't it be great if we had if we suddenly had an endowment and a building, and we could do a show, a series of shows featuring the great artists that we've had on this program and let them do whatever they want and certainly let them collaborate. 
and we'd certainly have the two of you. Well, thank you. I think it's a very great idea. Yeah. Well, if you, if you want to spread the word around, we're here. There's a lot of sculptors watching. <laughs> good, good. We're not a dying breed after all. Hey, Pamela, why don't we um, invite the audience to ask some questions? That's a great idea, Shelly. Let's do it. All right. If you'd like to ask a question, um, you can go ahead and unmute and um, ask away. Hey, Miss Pam. We go back a long way. Hey, Miss Stephanie. <laughs> <I never do. laughs> I'm just saying, what is the time frame? It sounds like you guys are collaborating and you guys are you are both doing amazing work. I have chills. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. You know, what we, we just do it. Okay. Time's not waiting on any of us, right? No, nope, it's all creating opportunities, Stephanie. <laughs> but thank you so much. I just, amazing work. Amazing work. I just, I, I have chills. Amazing work. Thank you. I see Patty has a question. Go ahead, Patty. Oh, unmute yourself, Patty. Right. Thank you. Um, I just want to compliment both of you on your work. Um, I can see that it it's um, it's definitely a creative process. And, um, uh, you know, Lynn, your work, I, I, um, I get the humor. It cuts to the quick and it's it's great. And I appreciate um, all of it. And Pam, I've known you for many, many years and I, I've, you know, loved your ceramic stuff. But, you know, I love that heartbeat. I think that that's very telling and I really appreciate the lengths at which you you visualize where you want to go, what you want to um, have the audience take away from it in whichever way they will, but knowing that it's there's there's a story behind it. I really appreciate that and have always um, admired the um, your fortitude to keep doing it and just <laughs> You know, I've watched you in amazement. So good on both of you and keep creating so we can think better. I have a great massage therapist for my hands. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> she saved my career. <laughs> All right. We have Sherry. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you so much, both of you. Uh, this is really really wonderful. Uh, Lynn, I was not familiar with your work, so it was great to, um, uh, to see it for the first time. And I was smiling the whole time. So your sense of humor is wonderful. And Pam, you know, I've been a fan for years and years of your work. I've always loved it. And, and one of the things that I really uh, enjoyed seeing uh, were mm -hmm. your images that cast shadows on the wall. And so the lines mm -hmm. kind of added extra lines with the shadows and it just added a whole other dimension. So beautiful, both of you, really bravo. Thanks for saying that, Sherry, because I completely forgot to mention the role of shadow in activating those surfaces. So yes, it's a whole, it adds a whole nother dimension. It does, beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, both of you. I'd like I'm to add this so well that I don't, I don't want to even Okay. start to wrap up, up but i think we have one more question coming did did someone yeah i have a question yes well first i i just want to thank pam that was it was just wonderful the energy in your work just really spoke to me um lynn had kind of told me a little bit about its nature but i no way could um extrapolate from that the power of the work so thank you um, and Lynn has talked to me about um, the whole casting of the bacon. So I know a little bit about it, but I realized when I was looking that it would be nice to hear a little more. 
the thing that Lynn has told me about the casting of the bacon is that she had to eat a lot of bacon. So, <laughs> of course, that was no hardship. But um, I just would like to hear a little more about the challenges you had in casting that bacon. Okay, and let me point out that that's my wife Beth asking this question, and that behind her is the continuing story of Eve that we looked at <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so the bacon, um, yeah. So I, I, for those of you who are familiar with the lost wax process of casting, you usually you start out with a wax pattern, you put it in a mold, you melt away the wax, and then the bronze goes to where the wax was. Well, in this case, I did. I skipped that whole wax thing and I just took the bacon that was cooked and then dried out a little bit and put that into the mold and then fired it up so that it melted away, basically turned it all into ash and uh, then you just blow that out and the bronze goes into where the bacon was. So, and then those got welded together and uh, to create the chairs. I have. And I had to make more bacon to try to match the color. I have a niece visiting me, and she said, "Please ask her tonight what happens to the bacon afterwards." It's gone, except for the one we used to match the color. <laughs> That's what I told her. All right, we have uh, Carolyn. Please unmute, Carolyn. One thing too. In addition to the art, Pam, she can't show all of her art, but I want to show these earrings. I don't know <laughs> if you can see them, but she makes wire earrings oh. of her figures. Yay! I'm wearing some too, Carol. And I get I get a lot of compliments on them <laughs> when I wear them. People say, "Where did you get those?" And I said, "Well, they're one of a kind." So, just wanted. Thanks, honey, and welcome back from your trip. Thanks. And I wore some too. <laughs> it's a little hard. Nice. Well, Shelly, is it time to wrap up or can we? Oh, oh we have another comment. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> so it's Stephanie, longtime friends of Pamela's family. So I have, I have a comment to Pamela. And I just really appreciated her saying, we are all gold, okay? We're all gold. I really, really appreciate that. And then to um, Lynn. So Lynn, you, um, you were explaining, um, and I'm sorry, yeah, I ha I've had a lot going on, but going back to the uh, work that you did and it was a letter U, I really didn't understand, or maybe I missed it, what that letter U stands for. Can anyone in the audience answer that? Well, it was made of screws, so it's a screw U. Ah! <laughs> After her breakup. <laughs> And that's why she called it. I've been a little bit oh. angry lately. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. I love it. I may use that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> amazing. Gosh, you guys do amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, Pamela, um, would you like to move into the artist opportunities part of the evening? I think I'll do that. Okay. Um, uh, the Artists Exchange was uh, created to provide a platform for artists to learn about each other, each other's work, each other's processes and techniques. It's also a forum for finding out about various opportunities for artists. And if you have an opportunity that you'd like to share, uh, now is the time. Uh, I should also add that we brought this program about during the worst of COVID when people really, really needed to interact on a deeper level. So um, I have one thing uh, to share. And I think um, if I can figure this out, I will put this up on the chat. 
But uh, check out, guys, San Francisco Artist Network. It has a calls for artists and, and exhibition opportunities. And uh, you can find all kinds of opportunities, different ones monthly. Um, www.sfartistnetwork.org. So once again, www.sfartistnetwork.org. Now, does anyone else have opportunities that they would like to share or like to tell us about a wonderful show that you've seen? I want to encourage everybody to get to the Alice Neal show before it leaves at the end of um, June. It is an incredible, the power of her portraiture is just It'll stick with me forever. I really, to be in the room with all of those powerful works was just riveting. She really captures the individuality of each sitter and really, you, you know all about them just by looking. Yeah, San, San Francisco, Pam? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, for any sculptors out there, Pacific Rim Sculptors, is a group that has a lot of opportunities all the time going going on. So check out the webpage for Pacific Rim Sculptors. And that's how Pamela and Pam and I, well, actually I met Pamela before that, but yeah, the two Pamelas are, are part of that group too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It provides some great opportunities and and for me, it was a wonderful way of, of meeting and forming community when I first came to the Bay Area. Yeah, and Jean, Jean's a member. I see Jean and Sherry was in also, and Zahava. Oh, and Patricia, Patricia Montgomery was in it. Yeah. Great, great. Um, so anybody else have anything, anything to share? Um, Shelly, anything we have um, we have coming up on at Gallery Route One? Uh, absolutely, we are very busy these days, and um, I'd like to invite anyone uh, who is available for tomorrow evening to come out to Point Reyes Station and join us for our Artists in the Schools fundraiser called the Art of Repujado. We will be um, embossing tin and having tacos and guitar music, and it should be a really lovely event. And um, again, raising money for our artists in the school program. So I'm gonna put a little link. Um, let's see here. Okay. Wish I was around the corner, I would be there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanna get a ticket, there's still tickets available and uh, there's a link right there. Um, another thing happening is that we are always um, looking for new artist members to join our gallery. And um, the end of June is our next application period. So right now would be the time to apply. And so let me um, put a link to that in the chat as well. And there are many opportunities to being, to being an artist member. Not only are there opportunities to show, but again, a wonderful community. And what else would you say, Shelley? You were once a member. Um, actually, no, I, I haven't been a member, but oh. uh, <laughs> but I think you know it's a well, it's a nonprofit art gallery, first of all. So it's not a commercial gallery where you're you know required to to sell work. Um, it really opens up possibilities for artists to not not be bogged down by the idea that they must sell their work and they can really um, explore and um, take risks. And I think that's a really exciting place for artists to be. And um, all the artist members run the exhibition program. So they all work together to plan the exhibitions, install the exhibitions, um, and, and all the work that goes into that. And, um, and we have, as a nonprofit organization, we have programs and um, Artists in the Schools program, Latino Photography Project, Fellowship Program, and of course this program, Artists Exchange. Um, so yeah, it's a great organization to be a part of. And um, 
I'm going to actually pop a donation link in our in the chat um, because we are a nonprofit and we are supported by um, donations. And so um, we'd love to have a donation from anyone here in this event tonight. I think that's it for me. Anybody okay. else? Um, um, anything else? Anyone else? Okay, then I'm going to go on because we've got something, another very exciting program coming up um, next month on July 13th, same time, same station. We will be hosting Carol Newborg, whom you have seen here tonight, a very talented artist, Bay Area artist, who is also known because uh, she's a sculptor and a painter. She's known because she is the program manager at the San Quentin Arts Prison Arts Project. And she will be appearing with Isaiah Daniels, who is a professional artist and substance abuse counselor and a former student of Carol's in the San Quentin Project. So um, we really look forward to seeing you here next week for that. Next month. Pardon me? Next month. Next month, yes, thank you, thank you. Next month, that will be a Wednesday, July 13th at six o'clock. All right. Well, it's been really lovely seeing all these wonderful faces and um, thank you, Pam and Lynn for sharing your wonderful work with us and Pamela for bringing them together. And, um, if you are interested in presenting as an artist at a future artist exchange event, please send an email to Pamela at PamelaBlotner at gmail.com. And if you were moved by today's presentation and want to support the work that Gallery Route One does to inspire people to experience the world in new ways through art, then click on that link in the chat that I put there and select community outreach donations and then artists exchange and thanks again for coming and we hope to see you at our next artists exchange on july 13th good night everyone thanks thank for inviting us thank you thanks for being here <laughs>